Hey guys, how's it going? Um, this is a completely different video from what I normally do, but I wanted to do kind of a quick guide or tutorial, if you will. This is a iCharger 308 Duo, and uh, it's having a very common problem. I've fixed many, many of these, and instead of just doing it and sending it back, I wanted to actually make a video to show people who are somewhat competent in soldering how to do it themselves. You know, if you're one of those people that's able to do it, you know, you can save yourself a little bit of money. So what happens is these transistors, these ones right here, are used for balancing. What it does is if there's a cell that's higher than the others, it uses these transistors to kind of act like a variable resistor and discharges power through it into the big metal heatsink and discharges that cell down to whatever the other ones are at and what happens is they fail eventually and then you'll be charging and it'll get to the balance portion right at the end and it will never finish or it will take a really 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 long time um, I was testing this one earlier I had a little three or six cell 1800 on it and it was charging at 2c normally but once it got to the end when it was trying to balance it was on the charger for over three hours and did not finish it could not balance one of the cells so it just sat there at like 0.1 amps or 0.01 amps and just sat there and I had to stop it because I got tired of waiting um, and that tells me exactly what I need to know cell number one on channel two does not work so I've already marked it right there as you can see in red if you're doing this yourself there's a PDF that you can find on uh, I think it's on RC groups but it might be somewhere else uh, all you have to do is type into Google discharge tube replacement manual of iCharter Duo series um, and it'll tell you there's a, it's a few pages down it'll tell you exactly which one corresponds to which cell so in my case it's channel 2 cell 1 so it's that one right there the 406 Duo 4010 Duo they all do it anyway um, since this is a 308 Duo cell number 1 on channel 2 is that one and so I'm going to replace that one and it'll start working again. So as far as what you need to do this, um, I would recommend some uh, some flux. Um, the stuff in your solder will work, but you might it might eventually burn out before you're done soldering, in which case you'll want to add a little bit more flux to it. This is chip quick low melt solder. It is basically solder that has a stupid low melting temperature. So what you do is you flow it onto existing joint and it lowers the melting point way down and it makes it a hundred times easier to desolder stuff so if you can get your hands on some of that it is kind of expensive but it's really good stuff and then you want some regular solder this is a uh, Kester 24 63 37 and then you'll need solder wick obviously you need soldering iron and all that but this is the consumables alright uh, so I'm not gonna show you how to take the charger apart um, because it's really not that difficult but just fair warning if you've never taken one apart before be really careful when you are taking the screen portion off of the board there's two screws that hold the board to it because there's a really short ribbon cable connecting to the screen and if you pull this away while it's still connected you'll probably break that connector and that is really not fun to replace other than that it's fairly straightforward not very many screws not very difficult so I already know which transistor I need to replace, so it's on this side, red one, it's going to be the, the one on the, the top from this orientation all the way to the right. So it's going to be these three pins right here are for that transistor. I have to excuse my very janky camera setup, it's just my phone sitting on a cup. Um, I moved this capacitor out of the way just cause my, so my iron can get in there easier. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch my iron on, and we'll get to work. My iron is set to 350 degrees. I'm going to add some flux on those three pins. I'm going to grab a little piece of uh, chip quick solder. And it's not very sticky, so you can't really tin your iron with it without having a little bit of regular solder on it. 
So I'm gonna do that now. I've got a little bit of solder on there already. And I'm just gonna get a little bit of chip quick on there and not melt the capacitor. Get that onto there. It'll flow into those solder joints. Keep heat on it for a little while, let it work its way down. Now, I'm gonna flip the board over. And use my tweezers to pull this up and away, and then bend it straight out that flip it back over I'm gonna add a little more flux again you can never have too much and just melt it a little more It'll take a while because even though it's low melt solder, this board is a massive heat sink with all the copper in it, high current traces and all that. If you get a little on there, it doesn't matter because there's nothing there. So it takes a little while for the low melt to reach all the way down. Might add a little bit more because that was a pretty small chunk. By now, I would expect that I can just come back here and pull it out. <laughs> and that's why I like the low melt solder because if I was using regular solder for that, by the time I got to the back to grab it, it would have already cooled and hardened. So <laughs> that's why I like the low melt stuff. So now comes the less fun part, the kind of annoying part, is now we gotta clean all that solder out of those holes. To, uh, allow us to get the new transistor in there. So I'm going to take a little piece of wick and bend it into a more manageable shape. Set it against those things <laughs> and do that. And there's a lot of solder there so this is going to be I'm going to probably use a pretty good chunk of this wick doing this. Might need to add more flux too. Yeah, just a little bit. like the solder mask came out of that. That's fine. Right, I'm going to clean the circuit board real quick so I don't touch it and get flux all over my hand. Give me a second. Alright, it looks like we got all the solder out of there because I can shove that transistor in there and it goes right in. So your mileage may vary in that regard. Sometimes the solder doesn't want to come out of the hole and you got to fiddle it a little bit. but. Anyway, now the hard part's done. Let me go grab a replacement transistor. Alright, there's the new one. I'll put a little thing here that says the part number. It's kind of hard to read on the screen there. So I'm gonna take this and you'll see on the side how they're bent so that it lays flush with the little circuit board underneath them. You want to bend the new one um, in a very similar fashion. So what I do, I take something solid, you know, anything metal really, and with it facing like that, I just push against it, 
and that usually does a pretty good job. And I'm going to take it and feed it through. Oops. It's kind of hard to do with the camera in the way. So I get it partially in and Solid enough in the pinholes that I can leave and just trust that it'll stay put. Sometimes it's you gotta hold it. But I'm just gonna take some regular 6337 and uh, solder that bad boy up. snips and cut off the extra length. there's still quite a bit of flux residue there but that is the job done all right got the PCB cleaned off mostly trim, trim the leads a little bit more and now I'm gonna put it back together and show you and here we are 17 minutes later and it's done <laughs>